today we're gonna take the 2006 Pontiac GTO and put on those American Racing headers and X pipe. Should be fun. First is the low hanging fruit, remove all the stuff on the top side, that's not necessary. Strip bar, not necessary. Okay. That came off relatively painlessly. Man, if only all these bolts were this easy. Next order of business is to disconnect the spark plug wires. Okay. All right. Cool. So that times eight. All right. Next up on the list is we need to remove this bracket. So, wow, that is a long thread. Yeah, I'll skip this part, but you get the idea. Right? Take these off and lay them on top of the intake. All right, a little bit of an update. These are actually, I guess, welded in. So it's only about that much, so it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, so got those off. They're hanging. Up here, so now the last thing is this 15 millimeter bolt for the oil dipstick. All right, so. Oh, I love that it's right against the brake wires. There's nothing better than being up against the brake wires. There we go. Oil dipstick out. All right, next order business is removing the cat back. So we got a few bolts right there. I guess this is a matter of PB blast and pray. It appears this one uh, is broken and is leaking so that's fun this would explain why my exhaust uh, seemed uh, significantly louder than uh, would otherwise be so fun fact so take this one that one then the mid pipes and this whole thing should just come right out all right so taking the wheel off definitely helps and then you can get to it very easily and with enough pb blaster and some brute force haha -ha, it is coming off man i didn't even loosen it that much look at that gap man i was basically running without a muffler can tell by the aggressive sound wow yeah that's uh it's pretty bad okay but that is how you do it Inevitable stop to the store because you know no job is ever complete without a trip to the store. I uh, got myself a few things to help me out hammer, saw blades, and extractor bolts, nut extractors, bolt extractors, whatever. So Basically what happened was both of the bolts for the front have uh, been completely stripped to the wire. And yeah. So this one was stripped even before I got to it. So my hunch is that the previous owner 
got to this point, stripped the bolts, said screw it, and then just sold the car. <laughs> Which, you know, isn't something that is unreasonable, but uh, yeah. But I was able to loosen all of these bolts with no problem, so um, that should be good. So once we disconnect the headers from the rest of the exhaust system, we'll take that out, we'll do some modifications to it, and then we will put the new ones in, hopefully without too much fanfare. So let's do this. All right, great success. Broke bolt. Yeah. So now this is this is nice, which is good. Awesome. So now should be able to take off the rest of this exhaust system all the way down and then take it off the top and we should have a completed uh, should be halfway done in theory <laughs> all right headers are completely off Ooh. all right so we're done exhaust system is completely out it weighs 16 and a half tons with a bunch of kinks for restriction restricted flow yeah so the headers themselves these even though they're like twice the size are like half the weight so that's fun yeah so now under the car is completely completely clean so while we're in here we're probably gonna replace those engine mounts with the uh, the newer ones the poly ones and since we have access to them now uh, we should be able to get in there no problem so that's next I'm gonna take out those bolts and lift the engine wish us luck all right so we got the bolts off underneath and and up top so now it's just a matter of lifting the engine enough to get those out and the other hope is that once we lift the engine, am I given enough clearance to put these things in so we don't have to drop the steering rack, which would be, which would be ideal. So, okay. All right, so I've got a piece of wood. Oh boy, hopefully this will, this will work. Okay. Centered. Everything should be good there. What do you think? Going up? Yeah. Okay. It's going up along with the. Okay. I wonder how high we should lift it before we. Well, just high enough to, you know, not any higher than we absolutely have to because. Yeah. Okay, I see the bolt, so if we can clear that bolt, I think it'll be fine. There's no pressure in the back or anything? Like, it's not, not any lines or nothing? So your, the, the plate and the jack is not like perfectly flat? Yeah, but the wood is gonna but, balance that out. Yeah, but. so hopefully... All right, well, I guess... All right, I think, oh, just 
just like another tiny little bit more and I think it should be good. How's the transmission gear? Look at those bolts on the cross member. Make sure they're not, are they taut? Like can you twist them with the with your fingers or anything? I just don't want to put too much pressure on that. Like on, on the bottom, the very bottom. Yeah. They're no, still they're, they're still, still loose. Still, yeah, they're still loose, yeah. Alright, I think that's as high as I'm willing to go. Yeah, alright, we're good. So So this part. You just worried about the new one, something much thicker? No, no, it's stock height. Maybe a little more. I really don't want to push it too much. It's starting to get. I think I maxed out the jack. Oh, okay. Well. Okay, um, why is that not, there we go. All right, this part, so I'll move back there. And then, shimmy that out. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that's gonna come out. So probably gonna have to remove these bolts here. Yeah, I'll just remove those because that, that'll be the easiest thing to do. Okay, let's do that. All right, just a little update. Uh, this bracket does not come out. <laughs> uh, there's a bolt here that's easy to get to. There's one under here that's almost impossible to get to. And then there's one way under there that's really impossible to get to. But the bracket does, the mount does like twist this way um, and then does come out. So that's, that's good on that front. So. We got that one replaced over here. And then this one is replaced as well. We're just gonna put the bracket back on, but that's how the new the new mount looks. So it'll polyurethane. So that'll be stronger. And uh, should be should be fine. So yeah. Progress. Progress is being made. All right, so the new mounts are in, brackets tightened. So now with the engine lifted, we're gonna try and get the headers in. I really hope it's this easy. I doubt it, but I really hope it's this easy. <laughs> nope, no way is that going through the top. It's gonna have to be through the bottom. Yep. All right, well. Let's see what we can do. This is my sort of, so I got the engine lifted there and then I got the trans lifted using the rest of that wood and some two parking stoppers. So. All right, so in theory, now this stupid thing's in the way. <laughs> I don't want to loosen it, but All right, we're gonna have to move this thing out of the way. Uh, I'm just afraid that the engine too much pressure on the engine, but oh, if it drops, it drops. <laughs> it just uh... at least. Okay. 
Whatever. Okay. So let's see if this is even even feasible. Okay. Uh, I think we have to remove this thing. Can I have the bracket with the, or the ratchet with the 13 mil? I think it's... It's over on that side somewhere, maybe on the table. I think we gotta remove this thing and get more space. It's probably 13 mil. Pretty much everything is 13 mil. Yeah, if we can get enough space through there with the engine lifted, that might be all we need. Keep the steering rack from coming off. I'll let you know. All right, this thing is off. All right, can you be my guide? Which ones? These fucking bolts, it's jammed up against. Like, you took the brackets off, but the bolts are still there. Damn it. Uh. You sure you can do it from the top? No way. The ABS and stuff is way too. Yeah, no, there's no way. No way, we're gonna have to drop the steering rack. Uh, so it looks like just a bolt there, and another bolt there, and then just take it off. And that should give us enough clearance. Okay. Yeah. So that's why you need to drop the rack, because there's just no way. There's no way through the top because of the ABS modules in there. Now, on this side, oh, we gotta disconnect the steering there anyway. But on this side, we might be able to, maybe, we'll see when we get there. But let's do the passenger side first, so. All right, dropping the steering rack. Yeah, all right, so that's, Pretty well aligned. Yeah, so that's aligned, the other side's aligned. I mean, as happy as I can be. We're just lowering the engine right now. And these jacks, you know, they're not, they're not the smoothest. Lowering more. That's just the bracket, like bending even more. Okay, that relieved the pressure. All right, so the engine should be in. Okay. Whew, oil pan still alive, so no oil leaks. No oil leaks. We're we're good. Yeah. So yeah, no, I think I think that's good. I think that's. I mean, it's, it's just like a little alignment, something or other. It's not too bad. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so engine is back in with new mounts. Hooray, hooray. All right, now we just gotta put the bolts back on and then drop the steering rack and shimmy the uh, headers in. All right, so we disconnected the steering. That took a little bit of hammering, but we got it out. So now I'm gonna try to do this from the top. <sighs> if that is enough clearance, all the better. 
Hmm. Yeah, no. Doesn't have enough clearance. Yeah, no. That can only come from the bottom. Yeah. It can only come from the bottom. All right. Well, it's worth a try. So now, now we just have to drop the steering. Here we go. All right, so using a 16 millimeter crow's foot to remove the power steering lines. the bottom one. <laughs> Fun times. Steering rack has been dropped. All the fluid has been drained. At least enough fluid to where... Uh, well, the, the first one's here, so that's... Oh, that's, that's, that's the first one? Yeah, that's reachable. Yeah, I got the extensions in already, so... That's the extension. So, yeah. So, bolt there, bolt there. Take the whole thing out and let it hang. Probably want to get an alignment after this, but hey. All right. Now for the big time. Oh, yeah. It's... Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. You got it? Yeah, I'm holding it. All right, let's get um here, let me see. Okay, so I think either this way or yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter. All right, that's fine. So, hold it. Okay. All right. So, now we're going to get I wonder if we should use Loctite. Probably not. Those didn't have Loctite. Don't listen well, to me for advice. Yeah. I'm not a mechanic. I am a guy on YouTube. All right, can you grab the, that end? I can hold this side. And just hold the back. Yeah. Here's another one. Another bolt here outside. No, but how are you gonna get it out? I don't know. We'll fish it out. No, no, we're not gonna fish it out. We have to like uh, do it now before we put it in more bolts in there. Someone's gonna get hard there if you put it in more bolts. Oh. All right. I thought we were so close, but I guess not. So, a couple things to note. The steering rack does not like to go back in. Another thing to note, the way these headers are set up, there's a hole right there. There's a little chamber in there. These bolts 
I like to fall in there. There's no way to take them out except to flip this whole thing. And obviously to do that, you need to take the headers back off. This is now the second time I'm gonna to try to do this. So when you're putting in the headers, you wanna make sure you're lifting the steering rack at the same time. All right, so update on the situation. Steering rack is back in, no problem. Bottom uh, power steering line is back in. The top one cannot be reached from the bottom. And since the headers are now installed, it's also very, very difficult to get at from the top as well. So that is my dilemma at the moment. I'm trying to figure out a way to get that in. I'll probably have to go through some way, obviously. But uh, yeah, they do look pretty sweet. Well, I just gotta reconnect the steering wheel, which again will be its own challenge. Um, but uh, shouldn't be too bad. So once I get the lines connected, I'll bleed the system later. Um, but then I guess it's to torque everything down. And then attach the mid pipes, attach the oxygen sensors. I think I'm gonna have to go back and get more, get a special tool to get these out because these are gonna be a pain. All right, so a little bit of a technique here. So you gotta rotate this kind of toward two o'clock. Put it on, rotate it to about six. Oh. And hopefully it doesn't get stuck. If it does reach in. Rinse and repeat. Let me just say this is the least fun part. It's probably best just to do like a quarter turn at a time. Well, actually, is that tight? Hey. through it's fine okay so it seems it's tight which is good okay so power steering is uh, is good so now I just got to reattach the steering linkage from the steering wheel put the bolt back on tighten down the steering rack itself now we're putting on mid pipes. Probably want to clean this out too. It's kind of gross. Okay. All right, as with the uh, inevitable second trip to the store, I got some oxygen sensor socket wrenches. All right, the old exhaust is taken out. Why? Why? Yeah, it's it's all crap. Um, but the good news, the very good news, is we got all the oxygen sensors out. This one is stripped to hell, but it is out, and it has like two threads that are good. That should be enough to uh, put it back. So, yeah. So, steering wheel, steering knuckle is attached. 
turns, flush the power steering fluid, probably need to run the pump in order to get more of the bubbles out. But yeah, now it's just a matter of getting the spark plugs and everything wired up and giving it a run. But that's gonna be tomorrow. Today, today we're, we're done. Things at least like a hundred pounds. Oh, look at those headers. So shiny. So nice. Alright, that's all for today. Um, I don't know how much more interesting stuff I could film other than you know maybe putting on the rest of the system. I'm probably gonna go to an exhaust shop and see if they can make me a a custom cat back. Um, might get some new mufflers or something and uh, thinking about five inch tips so that should be that should look pretty cool so but yeah big job we got the headers the engine mounts done and uh, that's it bye all right new day and I decided since I have everything taken apart I would clean the valve covers. So this is what the valves look like. You got the lifters, you got the springs. I'm sure all of this could be upgraded for better performance and everything, but yeah. So yeah, so I'm gonna clean off the the valves, valve covers rather. So this is obviously super disgusting, but the inside is surprisingly clean it's made in uh, Mexico okay, that's cool yeah so yeah I'm just gonna clean it off using some oven cleaner and uh, wipe it off and hopefully it won't look like a like an old junkard or something all right so I cleaned the valve covers is it perfect absolutely not does it look better than it was before yes 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 it does compared to like this one yes it does okay so let me show you the sheer amount of The weight savings alone is worth doing this. <sighs> Definitely. So while tightening everything down, I noticed that one of those bolts, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually touching the header. So you got a saw in there. Saw that piece off. Oh man. You know, when they design these cars, I just want to say, when they design these cars, they designed it with no performance modifications in mind at all. Like, they put things in such places that's impossible to get to. I mean, the back wheels, okay? I rolled these, but they have like a quarter inch steel tire shredder jutting into the wheel well. Like, why? Just, just have it flat or something you know why have uh anyway rant over all right so manage the saw off that one right there so now there's clearance yay there is one more spot that might give an issue that one why Australia why go in there all right so thankfully looks like we don't have to take off the exhaust system just loosen it get to that right there since it's pretty tight we'll just use a 
the blade directly and just file it up. So that's a good thing. Alright, I managed to saw off that so now we got some clearance. I still think this one is gonna give us issues and probably all these. I'm not cutting them by hand, so diamond tip treble. This will be fun. <laughs> Harder than it looks. <laughs> Come on. You might need a new blade too. Yeah. Oh, for the love of God. Okay. That's one. Alright, so this is just impossible to get back on. So, another trip to the store, I got a new one. The problem now that I have is somewhat twofold. Okay? So, first part of the problem is that these extension wires are just too long. Like, these hang very low. Like, all I really need is maybe, you know, three inches. And these, you know, are probably a foot at least. So yeah, so these I think are just way too long. Which is one problem. The second problem is these are too short. One of them connects, but the other one does not. And the problem with these is that I cannot find an extension anywhere, which is sad. So, what I'm probably going to have to end up doing, unfortunately, is soldering. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this wire, solder an extra few inches, and I'll probably use the cables from these 
and make these shorter extensions. <sighs> Man, this is going to be interesting. But it will be done right, and that's the important thing. All right, day three of the GTO up in the air. So, tried to do some soldering. Uh, epic fail. I don't know, maybe this soldering gun is just too cheap. Uh, maybe my solder's not good enough, but uh, no, no chance of fixing it. So, I bought another oxygen sensor for the front because, I mean, you know, it's whatever 50 bucks but the reason i like it is because properly fitted the o2 sensors actually are the perfect length still some give but are just the right length so that's perfect so i'll i'll torque them down i might uh, put a little anti-seize on there i'm going to need to put a little anti-seize on the header itself because i'm having trouble getting it in to to get this joint see there's a little gap there um so i read put a little anti-seize on there that should solve it and then for the back of the system i just bolted in bolted i just kind of slipped in the old system and put them on the hangers just so they don't uh maybe hold up the back a little bit but um yeah no mufflers i'm gonna take this to an exhaust shop and they're gonna fabricate me the whole uh, capex system for like 300 bucks so i figure that's a good deal um as far as the back o2 sensors go so this one is just the right length this one however is too short so i will have to do that i looked into getting newer sensors for the back as well but they were they were literally the same length so i bought these little butt connectors i'll squeeze them in lengthen it probably use some of the sheathing from the old so i'll make one of these longer and do that because the soldering idea just yeah i mean i i, I just i couldn't get it to work so so whatever um is what it is um so i will i'll get that longer and tighten everything down bolt everything up and uh potentially start the car so there we go all right regular one updated one because of the butt connectors i couldn't fit the heat shield so i had to kind of split it into two but yeah solid connection good to go so let's get this under the car This one, this one. Plenty of clearance. Uh, yeah. I like it. And then this one.
Okay. Front ones are connected. Rear ones are connected. Now I'm just gonna get this in there. This in there somehow. And we'll be good to go. Good times. Here we go.